Peace, family. Welcome to Homewood Live, presented by Homewood LA, a grassroots project committed to sharing stories from people who've been homeless to inspire the community to take action to end the homeless crisis. We strongly believe this starts with a shared vision of a world where all of our neighbors are housed. I'm Sean Baker. It is my tremendous honor and pleasure to be your host every Thursday evening over the next five weeks for this very special Homeward Live event. You will hear powerful stories from individuals who've experienced homelessness performed by great actors, followed by a candid, intimate conversation between the actor and the real person who lived the story. Now, let's drop in. You know this beautiful, versatile, incredible actress and producer from her work on Claws, One Day at a Time, Devious Maids, and La Golda, to name a few. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Judy Reyes as she shares a story of resilience from a remarkable woman named Bobby Jo. October 15 of 2015. After weeks of badgering Ricardo, he finally gave me a date. It was October 15 of 2015. That's when me and my kids were gonna move into our first real home. I was in sober living when a friend of mine turned me on to these apartments for families like mine. I got four kids. I started calling the program director, Ricardo, at least once a week. Everybody was like, Bobby Joe, he's busy, just wait. But I never even gave him a chance to call me back. I would be like, hello, what are we doing? When are we doing this? And it worked, I got an answer, October 15, 2015. I went with Ricardo to pick up the keys. Now, I'm an East LA girl. And I was like, it's an Inglewood? I was totally out of my comfort zone, but it took two buses and a thousand rides to hell and back to get there. I had to go with it. It was a pretty little apartment complex. All of the apartments were on this side. And then there was this little walkway and our apartment was on the second floor, number five. Ricardo let me go in first. And when I opened the door, it was just, Wow, it was amazing. It was just amazing. Right when you walked in, it was the living room and there was this big green brown couch with matching chairs. I love that couch. I still have it, all five of us fit on it. And, and if you kept walking through the living room to the right hand side, you were in the kitchen. It wasn't the biggest kitchen, but there was so much counter space I never had that much counter space. Now, me and the kids had our own place once before in Boyle Heights. It was a studio, maybe 10 by 10, and that included the kitchen and the bathroom. The refrigerator was in front of the window, blocking the light. I would move the refrigerator right next to the bed so we could have the window open. But that sucked because the place was infested with roaches. Before I would move the refrigerator, I'd say, okay, you guys, ready? And I'd push and bam, they'd come flying out everywhere. Roach City was so gross. We'd all be screaming. And I'd get the bleach out and the hot water and clean like crazy. <laughs> clean all night, but it didn't matter. Those motherfuckers would just come back with friends. The place in Inglewood was clean. And there was light. And if you walk down the little hallway, there were three bedrooms, one for the girls, one for the boys, and one for me, with my own bath. So I, I just never thought I could have that, you know? I never thought I deserved it. I used to describe myself as this porcelain dog. People would always be like, you're so pretty. You're so kind. But it was like this beautiful porcelain doll in a china cabinet and it, what nobody sees is her back is cracked. 
She's broken. I was so broken. I was hiding meth. I used to stay up all night watching intervention like I was going to find the magic answer to what was wrong with me. In Boyle Heights, me and the three oldest slept smashed together in the bed. And I mean, my son was a football player. They just learned how to sleep skinny with their arms raised like this. It would be my oldest son, Daniel, and then the next oldest, Giovanni, in the same position. And then Danielle and then me. And then we would put Judy Ann in a suitcase. She was a baby and she outgrew her playpen, so I put blankets and everything in an open suitcase. <laughs> we made it work. But then I started seeing bed bugs. I saw one crawling on Danielle. I would stomp them and spray bleach, but it didn't matter. The kids were getting bit and the landlord didn't care. I withheld rent, but nothing changed. Finally, they took me to court, but I had so many pictures of the bugs and the conditions, they didn't make me pay the back rent. But we had to leave. I thought it would be okay. I called my sister to come pick us up. And she took the kids and then she says to me, where you want me to drop you off? I didn't have anywhere to go, but she'd had it with me. I didn't blame her, I'd had it with me too. I always told my kids that no matter what, we had each other. But I realized that wasn't true if they didn't have me. I had so freely given up everything to my addiction. Got myself into inpatient care and I stayed this time until I got clean. Until I transformed from someone who smokes meth every day to someone who goes to a job every day. I got my driver's license, a car, and a place for us to heal together as a family. I put up pink curtains with white polka dots in the girls' room and let them pick bedspreads. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to set up a big bedroom like that. My only reference was the TV, like leave it to beaver. Two beds with a nightstand in the middle. So that's what I did. And I could tell they liked it. The way they played, the way they smiled. I felt like as a mother, I really did something good. I got us something good. To this day, I still sleep better when my youngest is smashed up against me. The older one goes, the older ones have gotten used to having their space. I don't know if I ever will, but it doesn't matter. What matters is they have room to grow. They are home. We are home. You could come. Beautiful, beautiful, beauty Reyes. Thank you so much. Wonderful job. And we have Bobby Joe, who's with Hi, us. Bobby. So, two beautiful women crying right now. I love it. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. It's just beautiful. Just take your time. It's just this. This is a real, uh, real special night. Real special night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, share your story on our first episode of Homeward Live. And also thank you, Judy Reyes, for just an amazing job. It's really beautiful. I'm very honored to meet you. Thank you. Oh, I mean, oh, I loved it. Thank you. I, you know, you're so, you know, oh, I loved it. I mean, that's exactly how I, like, I could just see myself. That's why I'm crying. Right, because I mean, I could feel it, and especially when she was like, "Those little bastards came back." I don't have roaches no more. <laughs> oh my god! That. <laughs> Thank you. Thank God. How are you doing now, Bobby Joe? I know we know where you were in the story, but how are things uh, working out for you now? 
Oh, so my God. Of you. Thank you. Um, well, uh, this year I celebrated six years clean and sober. Oh, so, that's beautiful. Congratulations. Uh, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, I moved out of that place and I have my own place. It's still a three bedroom, two bath, um, you know, um, about a year and a half ago, you know, some stuff happened and uh, my dad ended up moving in with me. So, um, you know, I gave him my room because, you know, that's that's what a good daughter does. Right. You know, and um, so I'm very, actually, go we ahead. Actually have, we have a picture of your dad if we yeah. want to share it. Look That's at my that. dad. I love it. Jill and he's got <laughs> his <feet>. Hello. <laughs> and the funny thing is that chair, that chair is that chair from Home Light. I still have the furniture that Home Light gave me. Like when I moved out, I. Mm -hmm. I tried like looking for other couches. I don't know. There's just something about those couches. I mean, they're still really good, so I don't need to get rid of them. But that's one of the chairs that I talked about in, you know, in the story, you know, when we first moved in. And thank you. Um, okay. And um, it's it's um, you know, my dad moved in, and um, <clears throat> I um, I was able to, um, you know, I'm constantly trying to move forward in life, like constantly trying to. Um, better myself because, you know, the kids all live with me and um, I want them to see no matter where we're at, no matter where we're at, that we could always constantly evolve and grow, you know, so I got a new job. Um, I'm fortunate I'm still able to go to work. Um, I'm a I'm an intern with the LA, um, LA County. So my goal is, and I'm really working hard on that, is to become a permanent county employee. Um, I, you know, I'm saving money to buy a house, actually. You know, my goal really is to hopefully in five years, you know, um, be able to have enough money saved and credit. Now I'm working on my credit, right? It's like one thing at a time, you know, and um, I really want to buy a house, you know, and- um, You're but, going to buy a house. Yeah, I'm going to, I am, you know, with the pool, um, yeah, I, it's gonna happen. It's it's it definitely will. gonna happen. Write it down, envision it, mm -hmm. speak, talk about it. It's gonna happen. Is that Julianne? Hey, Julianne. <laughs> Hi, Julianne. Hi. Me How old are you, Julianne? Yeah. How old are you? I'm eight now. Hi. I still like it's to play me. a lot. Yeah. You what? Go ahead. That you what? I like to play a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. That's lot, great. Lot, she Why didn't know about thing? the suitcase, about how she used to sleep in a suitcase. So when when you were telling, you know, when you were telling the story, she was standing next to me. She was like, "How's this? Where did you, right? No big deal." I don't remember this. You don't remember? No. Yeah, we. That's part, you know, of your, that's part of your playful nature. It is. We make things work. That's right? right. I hear she's a wonderful dancer as well. She wants to dance and perform. Yeah. I heard. Is that right? I'm, I'm very flexible too. She's very yeah. flexible. You see, that's oh, from sleeping oh. in the suitcase. See, it yeah. works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to sleep in my suitcase so that yeah. I can get more flexible. Uh, we have some pictures. Can we share those pictures? Definitely, the definitely. Yeah. Those Look are great photos. Um, those ones, the uh, um, the one of the sixteen. Danielle just turned sixteen um, last month on the twenty seventh. So actually, that picture is um, in the apartments that I live in now. That's actually in the the apartments. It's across the way um, on the same complex. They have like these little um, barbecues and tables. So um, we, you know, because of the pandemic, we weren't able to yeah. do anything big. So we just kind of did something as a family right here at home and had her, her sweet 16. That's magnificent. Now, how, do they, how do they respond to the limitations of the pandemic? I mean, they've been to, so, through so much. I you know what? They're actually, you know what? I'm very proud of my kids. Mm -hmm. um, 
they are actually really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, they really do um, understand, you know, that there is, you know, that we need to stay home. Like, well, they need to stay home. Judy Ann, you know, or if we go out, you know, you need to wear your mask. Um, they're just more like, okay, let's do what we have to do so it could we could get past it. Mm -hmm. right? right. And um, so they actually um they actually they don't get upset, but you know, they're like when they see people, or you know, you hear about people not wanting to wear masks in, in public, right. Right. and they're just like I don't understand that, mom. Like, what? Like, they, don't they? Don't they get it? If we just, you know, do what we have to do, we could get over it. And I love the way they think like that, right? You just do what you have to do and move past the hurdle. You know, you do what you have to do. And um, but yeah, they're doing good. My oldest son works, um, so he goes to work. You know, he helps out with um, the utilities. I pay rent. He pays utilities. Um, he just bought his first car. Wow. Um, you know, and I'm really proud of him. Like he go like, you know, YouTube, right? It's so amazing. Like he'll YouTube and he's fixing his own car. And I'm just looking at him like I can't believe that was my little football player. Yeah. And you know, he's fixing his own car. I mean, I'm that's what I'm 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 just doing the math now. If you're saying this was six years ago and he was a football player at that time so he's pretty much a grown man right in his yeah. early 20s late late teens early 20s um yeah he's gonna be 22 this month mm -hmm. Beautiful. wow yeah. i think one of the most compelling things for me in the whole uh, monologue that i had to do is how you know you had your and every time every time i say it it makes me want to cry how you had you know you had your own room with your own bathroom and that you felt like you didn't deserve that you know um uh, uh and it's it's so telling in so many ways and how people end up where they end up in terms of, you know, the kind of pain or the kind of sadness or the kind of trauma they come from or the kind of loss or the kind of need that they come from that that um, uh, puts them in a position to look for the kind of escape that put, uh, that, that, that leads to um, excess of, you know, addiction, you know, and, and then the, uh, and, and, and the difficulty of getting out of it. And 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 the, and the strength that you found, you know, to do that uh, in your children and for your children, mm -hmm. you know, and the place and the place that you found here in in, in these organizations, you know. So, um, and there's a true poetry in the in the words that that, that you gave us here, you know, um, uh, that's so familiar to me, just as a Latina woman. And I was just telling them just before we came on. You know uh, that uh, that's so familiar to me uh, in my family. I, I'm born and raised in the East Coast in the Bronx, and I've lost so much family to 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 um, to homelessness and to drug addiction as a result. Who weren't be able, weren't able to find the comfort and and the resurrection, so to speak. You know that you were able to find. That's what makes me so proud of you. You know what I mean? Um, and the strength and and. And this is such a hopeful, happy story to me that you just keep going ahead and you're gonna buy your damn house and nothing can stop you, you know? Um, and that, that these stories need to be shared. I'm just excited and proud and honored to meet you and honored to be a part, part of this, you know? Thank you. Thank so, you. Yeah. This is yeah, really a special, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I mean, I, I love that. Thank you, Judy, for saying that because I think like, um, especially knowing, like you said, like, you know, your personal experience with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's not easy. It's definitely not a life that I said, hey, when I grow up, you know, I want to be a meth addict, you know, and <laughs> I want to, you know, I just want to give every bit of me away for this, this thing, because, you know, why not? You know, I want to give, you know, being a mother, being a woman, you know, m my morals, you know, my values, you know, um, you know, I'm just going to freely hand it to, to this thing because yeah, why not? You know, it's, it's fun. Um, and so when I found myself in that, um, when I found myself in the midst of that, um, by the time I realized like, you know, in the beginning, you think, oh, it's fun. It's party. Let's party. It's fun. You know, it's this, it's that. You know, I could stop whenever I want. I don't want to. Like, and then 
when you want to and you can't, for me personally, I just didn't know. Like, I just no longer knew, like, what to do, where to go. Um, I was just stuck. Like, I was stuck. And, um, and yeah, you know, I'm very, very fortunate, you know, because my kids seen a lot. You know, mm-hmm. the kids, they, they live that lifestyle right along with me. You know, they seen a lot. And, um, you know, um, I'm very, very blessed. You know, I think, you know, Sean, we were talking about being blessed, right? Like, yes. every day I wake up, I, I'm blessed. And I, I don't think... I don't know, maybe 20 years from now, I might, you know, because, you know, this is going to be on record, right? Like, I might be able to look back and see Judy read, you know, read this, and I might not cry no more. I don't ever think that's going to happen, though, right? Because I still feel it. Six years, I still feel it. Like, I still feel how blessed I am. 12 have come out of that darkness and that hurt and that misery. Like, I, like, that's always going to be right there. Like, that knowledge of how I've come and where I've come from. And if, if for any kind of reason, like, I think, you know, like, I mean, because things happen, right? You know, and I live my day every day being grateful for the life I live, you know, because I don't ever want to go back to that. Like I could feel it today as I felt it six years ago. I could still imagine, still see myself walk into that apartment at home light. And um, I mean, I no longer, I love myself today. Like I love the woman I am. I have morals. I have values. Um, I have a lot of friends. Like I actually look in the mirror today and it's funny because, you know, I've gained some weight, but I look in the mirror and I'm like, I even like that weight. Like, ooh, belly, I like you. And I'd be rubbing some lotion on it. Like, I like you. I like you. Like this right here, I like you. You know, yes. um, there was a yes. time when I did not like no part of me. And it mm. didn't matter how I dressed up, how much makeup I put on, how skinny I was. I still couldn't stand looking in the mirror because... I felt disgusting inside, you know, now I'm just like, oh, you're beautiful inside and out. Like, it doesn't matter, makeup or no makeup. Before I was telling my daughter, I was like, oh my God, my cheeks are like this. I should, maybe I should put on some eye makeup. She's like, no, you look fine. I was like, you know what? You're right. I look fine. It's that natural beauty. I was just going to bring it on with some natural beauty, right? Um, I, I mean, it's a blessing to always be a part of something like this. And thank you, Judy Lane. It's I, I thank you. Thank you. Because I know and I felt it when you read that monologue. Like I felt it. Like you know where I'm coming from. And a lot of people do and a lot of people don't. And this is why I think it's important. Right. So they see being homeless or being an addict or being an alcoholic. We're not nobody. You're not. No. no. We're human. And I say we, I'm not living on the streets no more and I'm not active in addiction, but I'm a human. And until you live that life and know that hopelessness, like that, you know, utter hopelessness of how do I get out of this? Like you can never understand and it's okay. You know, it's okay, but like, let's not, let's like, don't judge though. You know, like, and that's why I love that Homeward LA because they're bringing the faces onto this, you know, this, you know, and that it is possible, right? It is possible to get to there, from there to here with programs, you know, with help, with, um, you know, um, I mean, you know, I'm very, very grateful to um, Home Light. Um, you know, um, and I've said it before, and, um, you know, um, even the writer, Cece, that wrote this, that helped me write this, right? I, she captured me. Oh, I loved it, right? Um, I still text her, you know, I still text her. Um, but I was in, you know, I had sobriety and um, not too much of it, but then I, you know, home light, and home light really gave me the opportunity to breathe to say, okay, now I have a home, what's my next step? 
you know, and, and then, like I said, the kids, we were able to heal. Like, um, we had family therapy together. We had individual therapy. I mean, you talk about healing, like that's a program. Yeah, that's, a lot. that's, you know, um, you had, I had a safe place to lay my head. I didn't have to worry. Like, am I going to eat tonight? I, I, I mean, it, like programs like that are very important to help people. How long were you in the program? I was very fortunate. Um, I was able to stay there for about two years. Wow. It's usually, it's a one year program. Um, I was fortunate um, because I mean, anything I do, I um, I comply. <laughs> First of all, like, hey, you want me to do this? I'm doing it. I have to do chores, I'm doing chores. If I have to sign in, I'm signing in. Um, you want me to, you know, help out? I'm helping out, you know, because I was, I'm to this day utterly grateful for Home Light. Um, and um, because of my family size, it was hard for me to get into just a regular apartment, right? Because um, yeah. of the income. My income bracket did not match what, you know. And um, I would get very scared when my exit date was coming and they would tell me, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Um, and you have nowhere to go. Yeah, like, and they knew that they, they were not gonna, they were not gonna kick me out, but I don't know that, right? Like, I'm just- How long were you homeless, Bobby Joe? Um, before I was in home light, oh, wow. Um, off and on, um, right before home light, it had to have been like about a year and a half. Okay. Um, off and on throughout, I mean, for a good amount of time, like throughout periodically, um, throughout, periodically. Life. yeah, okay. um, you know, staying in motels. Yeah. So you, like did you get to see your kids on and off throughout that time? I did. Um, you know, the good thing was, um, I mean, before before that incident where my sister just did not want nothing to do with me, um, what I was able to do was, you know, she would always take my kids. And um, I, I would have it that way because I didn't want to live underneath her roof because I wanted to still party. So mm -hmm. it's like, well, here, take the kids. Um, I'm going to, you know, and I would visit or I would talk to them. I mean, she, my sisters never kept me from my kids like that. Um, so I was able to. Um, I was able to. I'm, I'm grateful. Okay. Um, and I have an amazing, amazing, just so it's known, I have an amazing relationship with my sister today. That was my next question. It's like, what's your, is she older and how's your relationship with her now? She is older. Um, I'm not gonna say we're best friends. We're, we're completely different, but um, I, I respect and value. She was giving you tough love, right? Yeah, she, she was giving did. you tough love. At that you time. needed it. That's why you you are where you are today. I would imagine. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we call each other and we complain about our kids to each other. <laughs> you know, she got her own kids too. Plus, yeah. Four. yeah, she had she had her own two, and then she had my four at one time. Um, so um, she tells me how proud she is of me. You know, um, and I thank her. You know, for for being that person who always, um, she knew just the right time to cut it off and say no more, like no more. And um, it, a big part of that was was what started the chain reaction of where I'm at today. Right. That's incredible. Thank That's you. Really, really. I, I want to say to both of you, both of you ladies are just warrior queens. You're warrior queens to be able to, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, you show up for yourself, you show up for your family. It's just, you both are to be commended, honestly, you know. Um, I want to find out with everything that's going on uh, in the world and this doom and gloom, what do you, you know, use to stay inspired, to stay centered? Judy, what do you, what is it that you draw strength from? I mean, I draw strength from, you know, my family, my daughter, my husband, um, doing things like this, you know, particularly yeah. in this world that seems to be this, this world, this country that seems to be focused on um, drawing strength from our work and our labor. And by our, of course, I mean, black and Latino people. 
we're finally um, growing strong from ourselves and each other. Um, it always feels, or it, it, it feels like we're not doing enough. I feel, as you say, blessed that I've been able to achieve and accomplish so much. I, I feel, I mean, an increasing and more desperate need to always give back um, and, and, do, and do something and a little bit more. So when there's something like this that's happening, you always know that it's possible. So there's um, inspiration and there's hope in, in, in the resilience of people like Bobby Joe and, and the work of, of organizations like this. Um, and and this the you know the circle that I function in to, and, and to know that you know it is possible that the, 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 the change and the revolution is coming. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I, and I laugh, but I'm so fucking serious. It's not even fun. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I, 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 love, I love the fact too, Judy, that you you have your daughter with you. Uh, you know when you're doing your grassroots. Um, things and being on the front line. I saw uh, that you have her with the Ronald McDonald house and yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that's to me is, is, is admirable. Is that something that's really important to you to, to uh, you know, absolutely. In, inspire and, your daughter to, to have that as well? Yeah. You know, uh, whenever we do, we, we uh, last year we went, we went there and we cooked my husband, uh, uh, George Valencia, is he's a producer, and uh, and and it's absolutely vital for him to to organize all, all of these things. Last year, we uh, we we get together anybody, you know, we 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 function in, in in pretty affluent circles, so we grab in people who 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 are chefs and 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 who cook and stuff, and they're always extremely down to to do what they got to do so can you cook this can you come here can you then and, and they come in so so uh, we last year or the year and the year before we went and we cooked for the ronald mcdonald house we couldn't do that this year so we got this wonderful people from this kitchen to donate the meals and we just went and and, and gave it to them and we do we donated all these brunches um and we make sure that she's there with us and that she knows what's happening and she knows what we're doing what she's doing because I, I I didn't grow up that way uh, the way that she's grown up so it's really important for us to un for that she understand that that you've got to do the right thing Amen. you know um, and we take her everywhere we go and we do, to do everything that we're doing yeah it's absolutely vital wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. so you have another project that you actually is another baby a creative baby of yours Lagolda please tell. Uh, La Lola Animation is a pro-social animation about uh, a, a young Latina orphan who has a, a soccer team and uh, she uh, is part of a pro-social, it's a pro-social animation about a little girl who goes around the world playing soccer team, soccer matches with her group of orphans addressing uh, issues that affect kids globally, be it um, racism, uh, disabilities, uh, homosexuality all over the world with her team. So she she and her team will fly with the, um, with, with the foundation to any country and uh, play a match against another team. And the, the issue of the episode will be um, uh, racism. And they will tackle that issue and address that issue in the episode. And every episode addresses um, a, a socially conscious issue. Um, and we're extremely proud of the animation. And at the end of each episode, there's a live uh, action issue that we will, will tackle um, in the episode as well. And we're extremely proud of it. This last episode was um, 30 minutes, so it's a short, it, it's actually um, a, a bit of a short film with a, a professional soccer player named um, Jess Fish, Fishlock. And she, um, uh, once we, uh, where uh, an actual child comes out and um, Jess Fishlock, who's an actual gay uh, uh, female uh, soccer player, addresses her coming out as well at the end of the episode. And it's doing extremely well in, in, in Europe. Um, and it's just a wonderful way of us uh, addressing issues that mostly uh, uh, affect um, women, Latinos, African-Americans, um, people of color, and the LGBTQ people, things uh, that, um, you know, the uh, people here in this country are really nervous about addressing, and we're extremely proud of it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 
Or where where can we see it? Where can we find it? You we can want to find it out. online. You can uh, go, go into my Instagram, like all of the animation, and it can tell you everything about it, everything you need to know on how to find it. Wonderful. At, at Wonderful. Well, ladies, listen, this has been just a phenomenal night. Any any parting uh, words for each other? Anything you want to say to each other before we? Uh... It's been uh, my absolute honor to to be a part of this. Uh, uh, I'm so proud of you. Uh, uh, you're an inspiration to everyone, uh, and, it, and it, it, proof that it can and will be done. Um, and I just look forward to being a part of this organization and supporting it in every way that I can. So thank you so much, Bobby Joe. And I look, I look forward to um, coming to your house yeah. and swimming in your pool. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm already looking on Instagram for you. <laughs> <laughs> you all have a party. It is at Judy Reyes and the number one. Okay. Instagram and Twitter is the same thing. It is I Judy Reyes without the number. And in the Instagram for Lagol is the Lagolda uh, animation. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely. Mm -hmm. You know. I thank you, Judy. Thank you, like, um, just to hear everything that you're doing, right? Like, that's that's really amazing. Like, you know, um, that you know from every issues that you're tackling and everything. Like, um, I really, really, really love and respect that. You know, like I said, because it feels good to know that you understand exactly the life that I came from. And not only do you understand it, but you are making strides to bring awareness to it because that's exactly what I love about Homeward LA. And not only that, but LGBTQ, um, you know, just all of those because, you know, it affects us. I mean, it, I have a gay son, you know, like, so I mean, and I'm proud of that, you know, and as you and, should be. And, you, you know, and um, so just to hear that, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to know that um, you walk the walk and you talk the talk. And so thank you. Thank you. And it's been an honor to have you, you know, read this, you know, um, it really, it really is. It really is. So thank you. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Ladies, this has been just amazing. Thank you very much again, Bobby Joe, for giving us the opportunity uh, to share your amazing story and triumphant story. And Judy Reyes, we just are humbled um, and honored to have your talents with us uh, always. And um, thank you. This has really been a wonderful night, a beautiful night. And I second that we will be partying at Bobby Joe's new house. I will definitely have everybody <laughs> over. <laughs> God bless you both ladies. No doubt. Stay um, well, stay you. healthy and safe. And Thank uh, you very much. I'm, I'm just beside myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, folks, that is it, family. The first episode of Homewood Live. So special and uh, so powerful. Follow Homeward LA on uh, social media, facebook.com forward slash Homeward LA. On Instagram, Homeward at Homeward Los Angeles and on our website, www.homewardla.org. Also, please leave us your email so that we can keep you abreast of the wonderful things that we have coming up, including a podcast, a Homewood LA podcast that we're really excited about. I have to tell you that tonight's story and all the stories that you will hear came from people who went through the Midnight Mission, a, an amazing nonprofit organization on Skid Row. Now, if tonight's story, Bobby Joe and Judy Reyes inspired you, donate to the Midnight Mission. There's a link somewhere in the description. No amount is too small or too large. In addition, I want you to think about what you can do in your own community to help with this homeless crisis. Um, can you buy a meal for someone who's homeless? Can you give them a word of encouragement? And once we get past the coronavirus, volunteer. Join us next Thursday, 
July 23rd. Same time, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, as our special guest will be legendary actor Bradley Whitford. And he will be sharing a powerful story from another remarkable man named Dusty. That's it. Take great care of yourself. Keep building. Keep climbing. Keep shining. We are Homewood LA. I'm Sean Baker, your host. And this is Homewood Live. Peace and good night. Thank mm-hmm. you.